Welcome, Hillsong Church. We're going to start the service off right. We're going to praise and worship King Jesus together. Come on. Arise, my soul. Blessings till I've been dead. 
And we have had a year where we have um, seen unprecedented things happen with COVID and with all sorts of stuff, but God has seen us through and He has been faithful to us. He's been faithful to you. And so right now, I don't know about you, but we are starting to make New Year's resolutions. And um, we're starting to think about what 2021 is gonna look like and trusting God to lead us into new open spaces. So D, have you been making New Year's resolutions? Are you thinking about stuff? Uh, not yet. Not yet. You've got a few days to go. Okay, Tyler, I know that you are always good for a New Year's resolution. Reading more, more books. Reading more books. More. Yeah, I think that's. I love that's that. What about you in the chat? You know, if you have been making New Year's resolutions or you're starting to think about them, resolutions, then you should put that in the chat too. Okay, Shekinah, what about you? New Year's resolutions. I think I want to have more people over and actually more people over. 100% more people around my table, cook for more people. That's my resolution this year. And I'm going to pray that that actually is a reality for I our 2021. So. Okay, Dave, where, what about you? What is your New Year's resolution? Bible in a year. The Bible in a year. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. Um, how, are you, how are you going to go with that? Are you good at sticking to a plan? No, which is why it's a resolution. <laughs> Are you good at sticking to a plan, church? Are you good at getting through the Bible in a year? How many hands up of people who have been doing that? Have you read the Bible in a year before? You know, I actually did um, Nathan Finocchio's 30 Day Shred and I read the Bible in 30 days and that was a lot of reading. Um, but I love the thought that we would seek God in 2021 and that, that we would find Him waiting in our future for us. You know, every Sunday morning we bring prayer and praise reports and we hear about how God has found our people this year. And I just want to encourage you, church, that He is still on the move. He is still doing things in our lives. And I, I want to join with Lynn as she is thanking God that she got through a whole year of school almost anxiety free. And Rosalind, who is praising God that despite the current economic challenges, she received a very competitive job offer before finishing her master's degree. And yet there's a whole lot of people in here praising God for putting their marriages back together and healing and all sorts of things. And likewise, there are many prayer reports that people asking us as a church if we will pray with them for situations that they are finding themselves in. And whether that is battles with cancer or whether it is marriage restoration or provision of a house, we're going to trust God with you and not only with individual needs, but this morning church, why don't we pray for the nations of the world? Why don't we pray that God would bring solution to COVID and for all the many people who have found 2021 to be difficult, who have actually seen people that they love die or they have been waiting for a vaccine or an answer. Why don't we trust God that in the middle of everything, He will make Himself known and find ways through it and help us to actually endure. So let's pray. Put your hand towards the screen or to heaven and let's trust God. Father, we thank You that You are in our lives, that You are moving and that You're working, God. I thank You that You are a miracle working, God, that You are strong and You are mighty. And as Your children, God, we can trust You with our lives this morning. And so Father, I pray for people who have come under threat this year, that You would help them to lift their eyes heavenward, God, that You would give them strength to endure. God, where there is grief and sorrow, that You would bring joy and answers. And Father, around the world where there has been humanitarian crisis, where there have been people under threat, Lord, would You help them to see You at work. God, I thank You for the way that You are moving in our church, that You are alive and well. And God, I pray that You would continue to find people trusting You into the future. In Jesus' mighty Name, and everybody said, Amen. Well, church, where are you watching from this morning? What are you doing? Why don't you just tell us? And you know, I wanna encourage you that in the middle of everything, we are moving on into 2021 and there are good things in store. Our summer camps are coming up. So all the youth and kids, like I bet you're excited because God moves at summer camps. He marks kids for His kingdom. He marks our youth. And there are times when we seek God together and He is, he is amongst us. And so if you uh, um, have got youth in your family or you've got kids who might be interested in coming to summer camp, why don't you register them today? Jump online and all the details and information about how summer camps are actually rolling out this year are at hillsong.com and you can get involved like that. 
The other thing that you could consider as 2021 dawns is Hillsong College. And that is an incredible Bible college that we have here at um, the Hills campus in the city and actually all around the world now, Phoenix, Arizona. And we are starting a college in South Africa and you can register and get involved or you can study online. And Daisha, why don't you come here for a second? Because you are one of my favourites. You dominated Christmas Spectacular last weekend, lady. You were fantastic. But you are part of Hillsong College, right? Yes, I graduated. You graduated. See, that's why I've got you here, because you're a pin-up girl for college. So how many years at college did you do? I did all three. You did all all three. three. I did. And where do you come from? I come from Seattle, Washington State. And what has been the most life-changing part of college for you? Um, For me, I think actually learning how to read the Bible was the biggest thing for me. Um, Something that I've always been taught, like I've grown up in the church, um, but actually learning how to read the Bible and interpret it for myself was probably the biggest thing that I got out of college. I love that. And we have benefited from having you as part of our creative team over this season. You've served in our team and we have loved it. So thank you very much. Would you encourage people to come to college? No, just would you like... If somebody asked you, sorry oh, guys, if oh, somebody asked you, would you encourage people to come to college? Yes, like, absolutely, 100%. It's been a great experience, right? Good job. So <laughs> if you're sitting at home and you're thinking about this, Daisha and Cass and Lee Burns on the front row and a whole lot of people would encourage you to make your way to Hillsong College. You are gonna have a life-changing year in 2021 as you put Jesus first. And speaking of putting Jesus first, one of my favourite things that I get to do um, is to encourage people around their tithes and offerings. And this morning, just before I do, I wanna show you a video of the church in action, the type of things that we have been doing as Hillsong Church over this season to help you as your church. So why don't you take this look and let Wendy Brown encourage you for a moment. Before COVID-19 started and everything, we were going out, we were visiting people in their homes and, you know, go for walks together. We'd meet for in a cafe and have a, a coffee together. Since we've been having church online, we're actually having to be more intentional now about keeping in touch with people. The fact that we can actually do church now with everyone all over the world, there's no limits now to who can watch a church service. We get all sorts of prayer requests, talk to pastor requests coming in and we read every prayer request and then we respond with a scripture, we we pray about the scripture, we get the right scripture and we reply to them. Some of us are a little bit Zoom fatigued in this season but you know how can we make it fresher? How can we actually really truly come alongside people and support them and and pastorally care for them and you know I think we're always looking to be innovative and to think about new things and different things we can do. They're not sending in a prayer request to like a robot. They're sending their prayer request to us. There's a team of us from all over Australia, not just Sydney, reading all these prayer requests. Every prayer request is important. Every prayer request is read and every prayer request is answered at some point. If you have a need, let us know about it so your church family can come alongside you and pray with you. that story because it shows you that the church is not dead in this period, but it's actually alive and well. Our pastors are staying in touch with the church. And you know, as we come around our offering, our tithes and our offerings, they're God's way of providing for the church, for the work of the ministry. In fact, in Acts 4, 32 to 33 in the Message Bible, it says, the whole congregation of believers was united as one. Listen to this church, one heart, one mind. They didn't even claim ownership of all their own possessions. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. But they shared everything. The apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of Jesus the Master and grace was on all of them. And it goes on to say that there wasn't anybody with a need amongst them. You know, as we come around our tithes and offerings this morning, as you contribute to Hillsong Church, what you are doing is doing exactly what the early church did. You're not claiming any right to your own possessions, but you're providing for the greater church as they have need. And you know, some of the things that we provide for is actually to turn the sound and the lights on and to employ pastors to care for people. But some of the other things that we do as a church is we actually supply for those who are in need. 
And as a pastor here, I have been on both sides of that equation. You know, I have been one of the people who gets to go into hospitals and take the gifts and the resource that we provide as a church to people who are in need. And I have watched families who are under great pressure and duress actually lean into the church and be so grateful that the people of God are providing for them. And then as a family who went through crisis, we've actually also been on the other side of it. And we've watched the church rally and come home and paint fences and bring meals and dinners and actually provide for our family when they're in need. And I can honestly say that you're giving. It enables the church to do exactly what the early church did, to testify to the resurrection work of the Master Jesus Christ. And so this morning we are gonna receive an offering and a tithe. And I'm gonna encourage you again to put God first in this way. And so why don't you watch the screen, the many ways to give, and then let me pray for you. Your faithful giving helps impact others with the love and hope of Christ. To make a secure gift online, go to hillsong.com forward slash give or click the Give Donate button if you're joining on Hillsong Church Online. Enter your gift amount and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, we will send you a verification code. Enter your card details and you're done. Setting your gift to recurring is a huge blessing to the church as it allows us to be more intentional in moving our vision forward. Thank you for your generosity and commitment to the ongoing ministry of Hillsong Church. So why don't we pray? Father, I thank You for the generosity of Your church. I thank You, God, that she points to the fact that Jesus is alive. God, I pray that You would enable us to continue to build the Kingdom and to minister to people in need this year and in 2021. And everybody said, Amen. Well, thank You for Your generosity, church. We love you a lot, but right now, everybody say right now in the chat, right now we have something incredibly special. I know it is Sunday morning, but we have like one of our very best Sunday night preachers, Scott Sanger Samways. He is from Newcastle. He is incredible. He is probably one of the greatest evangelists that I know. And he has faith to believe God that anything is possible. So while you're at home, why don't you stand to your feet, put your hands together in the chat and actually believe God is gonna speak to you this morning as Sanger preaches the Word. Good morning. Wow, (laughs) thanks Cass. Wonderful. Well, I hope you're enjoying this Sunday morning so far. I don't know about you, but I got faith this morning. I've got faith that God has something in store for our lives, that whatever this year has brought you, whatever season you found yourself in or whatever you've been going through, whether there be highs or lows, we serve a God who's on the throne. He's not dethroned by what's going on. No, He's in control. And we're gonna pray and we're gonna believe right now, just for God, just, just remember the greatness of who He is. And so Father, we do, we thank You this morning that Father, You are with us, You are for us, that Your hand is upon us, that Your greatness goes before us. And Lord, we just pray Your Word this morning would go deep into our hearts, bring truth and bring freedom for our lives. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen, Amen. wonderful. Well, so good to be sharing Sunday morning. Like Cass said, normally I'm on Sunday nights, but they're letting me loose today. They're letting me loose in the morning, you see. And so look, we're gonna read from Colossians chapter two, verses six and seven. It says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, it says, continue. Somebody say, continue. Put it in the chat, continue. It says, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith. And it says, as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Have you ever gotten to the end of something and you're wondering, what's next? You know, when you come to the end of something, like, hey, we're at the end of the year, 2020. Some people are saying, oh no, what could be next? But you think about it, when you come to the end of something, have you ever thought, wow, well, what's next? Will this continue or will this finish? Maybe you come to the end of a job or the end of studying or the end of a relationship, the end of a career, the end of a position. Or what about when you're in an SMS conversation, you're texting someone and you're waiting for their reply and you can see those three little dots coming up and illuminating and then the three little dots disappear and you're thinking, will they reply? Is this going to continue? And then you don't know what's coming next. Or what about when you've been reading a book or you're at the end of a Netflix series and you're thinking, 
All of these things, will they continue or will it finish? Well, you know, Paul says in this passage, continue to live your lives in Him. You see, whatever this year has been, can I say to you, continue. Whatever you're facing today, can I say, continue. Whatever you're up against, whatever failure you've been through, whatever mistakes may may have been made, can I say the Word of the Lord this morning is continue. You see, Keddy and I, my wife, Keddy, she's Bulgarian, yeah, we love going to the movies together. I mean, I just, we, we love it. You know, you go to the movies, I mean, get little popcorn. Everyone likes a bit of popcorn at the movies. You get your little bag of Maltesers, your M&Ms, your little choc tops, or, or, or you get your soft drink and we just zone out. You know, you veg out, you check out, you just, you're ready to watch the movie. And you see, when I get to a movie, I like to pay attention to the movie. I'm a watcher, okay? So I like everything quiet. I like to be focused. I like to be intrigued by what's going. But me and Keddy, we're different. When we go to the movies, you see, Keddy's not a watcher. When we go to the movies, Keddy, she's a talker. Anyone here, you ever known someone when you go to the movies and they're a talker? They like to talk through the movie. Well, that's my wife. She constantly likes to talk through the movie. She likes to ask questions because she's a talker but I'm the watcher. And she'll constantly ask questions like, like, who's that actor? Oh, what, what movie are they from? I know that person. What's his name again? Who was she? Is she important? Is she with them? Oh, she's not with them. I thought she was with them. Why is she not with them? Oh, she never was with them. And so we're, and she's constantly, she needs a, a constant running commentary of what's happening in the movie. And my daughter, she's exactly the same, Jaya. And so I go to the movies as a family and I'm trying to watch the movie, but I've got Keddie on one side asking questions. I got Jaya on the other side asking questions and I'm just shushing all over the place. I'm big shusher in the movies, but they're constantly talking. Well, I've worked out a solution. I think that every movie should have little subtitles for people like my wife. Subtitles that when you're watching the movie, these subtitles will come up and say things like, this actor was in these other two movies that you're thinking of right now. Or a subtitle that says, this actor's real name is, or this person is only in the movie for a short time. So don't pay attention to them. This character, they're the main character. So follow them. That would change my whole movie experience. Okay, but then you have movies that have bad endings. You know, movies like Remember the Titanic, where Jack dies in the end, or The Matrix, where no one knows what happened in the end, or Superman, or The Notebook, or then there's that movie, I don't know if you saw Marley and Me. Oh, sad movie. Remember that movie with Owen Wilson and the dog? Sad movie, Marley and Me. If they were gonna make a sequel to that movie, it would just be called Me. Very sad movie, okay? So so here's the thing. Then you've got other movies. The movies that as you're watching the movie, you know that they're not gonna have enough time to finish the movie. You're thinking we've been sitting here for an hour and a half to two hours and, and they're not gonna make it. There's not enough time. They're not gonna be able to rescue and do a finish by the end of the movie. They're running out of time. And then you see these three little words that come up on the movie. To be continued. And tonight, or should I say this morning, that's what I wanna talk about. That's the title of my message is to be continued. Because let me tell you what God has started in your life. He wants it to be continued, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of where you've been or what's happened. That's what I wanna speak about this morning. You see, I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves of those three little words especially when you've been in a challenge, especially when you faced hardship, especially when you're in a season that hasn't delivered what you thought it would. You see, maybe bills are coming in the mail or maybe it's, you know, it's a family conflict or maybe you receive some bad news or maybe the boss has given you a hard time at work. Maybe it's debt. 
Maybe it's divorce. Maybe it's depression. Could be all of these things. But, and you think to yourself, when am I ever gonna get a break? When are these things gonna ever let up? Because when it's piling on, when you're getting hit with things, you know, and bad news keeps coming, often what we do is we think in absolutes. We think in absolutes with problems that we face. In other words, we get so fixated on that challenge or circumstance that we become consumed with what is momentary and temporary. And then we start to think, well, that's final. Well, we think, well, that's finished. We think, well, that's over. And we start to look at that situation as, well, I lost that opportunity. Well, I lost that opening. Well, I lost that moment. Well, I've lost that door. I've lost that relationship. And before you know it, you start getting yourself into a down place where you start to lose your hope. You start to lose your joy. You start to lose your peace because you're so consumed with what's happening around you and you think it's permanent because you're thinking in absolutes. Well, Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. He said, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So Paul is saying, don't get fixated on what you see right now. Don't live in absolutes of what you see in front of you. It's temporary, he says. Do you know what that phrase to be continued means? It means that there is another episode to follow. It means that what you are seeing is not final, that what you are seeing is not finished and that what you are seeing is not over. No, Paul put it like this in Philippians 1.6, that being confident of this, that He who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So what Paul is saying, I know you're going through stuff right now. I know you're in a season of hardship right now. I know it's been challenging. I know you've been up against the wall, but you need to know that your God is gonna carry it through what He begun in you. In other words, He's saying it is to be continued, that your calling is to be continued. Your dream is to be continued. Your health is to be continued. Your marriage is to be continued. Hey, your purpose is to be continued over your life. He says this in in 2 Timothy 3 verse 14. He says, But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of because you know those whom you have learned it. Think about that. He says, continue in what you've learned. I love that. To be continued. How do you continue? You say, well, how do I do that? How, How do I continue? Here's what you do. It's so simple. Here's what you do. You pick up where you left off. You pick up where you left off. Think about your relationship with God, just as an example. Hey, maybe you feel distant from God. Maybe you can feel a bit disconnected from God. Maybe even a bit drifted from God. And here's the thing. You don't have to work your way back to salvation. No, you don't have to go back and start again when it comes to your relationship with God. Maybe you, you, you feel distant for maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few years. But here's the thing, to be continued means just pick up where you left off. You see, people disqualify themselves because we don't think it's that easy. In fact, we make it complicated. You see, we think, well, you don't know what I did. We don't know where I've been. You don't know who I was with. You don't know the environment that I was in. You don't know what I was a part of. You don't know what happened to me, what was done to me. Oh, it's been a while since I've read my Bible. Oh, it's been a while since I've prayed. Oh, it's been a while since I've been in church. It's been a while since I've worshipped. Yeah, but here's the thing. Just pick up where you left off. That's what you do. To be continued is to pick up where you left off. Look at Peter in the Bible. I like the story of Peter. We're gonna turn to John chapter 21, verses four to eight. And it says this, a bit of the story of Peter in verses four. It says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. And He said, well, Throw your net down on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. 
When they did, they were unable to haul it in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard it, he said that it was the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him because he'd taken it off and he jumped into the water. Then the other disciples, they followed in the boat, towing in the haul of fish. For they were far from, not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. I want you to see the context of this story. Here's Peter and he's with John and he's with the other disciples and he's in the boat. Why is he in the boat fishing? I'll tell you why, because in context, Peter at this point felt like a bit of a failure. He felt like that he had failed Jesus. And so what did Peter do? He went back to his past. You know what Peter's past was? He was a fisherman. That's all he knew. So for Peter to return to his past was to return to go back to fishing. Now there's nothing wrong with fishing. Fishing just represented his past. And so here is the context of where we find Peter. He's back in his past. He was with Jesus, but he felt like he failed. And so he returned to his past. But then we see this beautiful picture in the story where Peter realises that it's Jesus. And so what he does is he jumps out of the boat of his past and he starts running towards his future in Jesus. And that's where we pick up this story. You see, Peter, he blew it a number of times following Jesus, which I relate to that because I've done the same and I'm sure you have as well. We've all blown it when it comes to following God, getting it right sometimes. But you think about Matthew 26, Peter said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, I'll never leave you. And then in the next chapter, he denied Jesus three times publicly. Then in Mark chapter 14, Peter is asked by Jesus to pray. But then Jesus returns and finds Peter fallen asleep. What about in Matthew chapter 16? Peter confesses when, when Jesus said, who do the, the crowd say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Messiah. You're the Son of God. And he said, blessed are you, Peter. And then in the next chapter, Peter started getting caught up in things of the world. And Jesus said, hey, get behind me, Satan. Peter blew it many times in following Jesus. He was up, he was down. He was up, he was down. But then in Acts chapter two, he becomes the preacher at Pentecost. After all of these mistakes and failures and blunders in following Jesus, He becomes the preacher at Pentecost. And I was thinking about that because what did Peter do? He just continued. He just continued. You see, you think about others in the Bible. Think about Moses, 40 years in the desert wilderness, yet he continued. Think about David after sin and murder, yet he continued. Think about Noah after drifting for 150 days, uncertain of landing on shore. He continued. Think about Job after disappointment in his family and livestock, yet he continued. Think about Jonah, three days in the whale, on the run from God, yet he continued. What about Samson losing focus on the things of God, yet he continued. What about Joseph after family rejection and abandonment, he continued. What about Paul? He was thrown into prison, yet he continued. You know what we learn from all of these people in the Bible and from Peter is just continue where you left off. You see, our problem is we experience feelings of guilt and shame and we think I'm not worthy, I can't continue. You don't know. I remember talking to a guy in church. He'd been out of church for a little while and he started coming back and after a year I bumped into him. I said, how you been enjoying in church? And he said, oh, today I took communion for the first time. And I said, but you've been coming for a year now, over a year. And he said, yeah, he said, but from the life that I was living, he said, I just didn't feel worthy that I could. And I thought, that's what we do. That's not God. That's what we put in ourselves. We punish ourselves. I did that when I was young. I remember when I was in my teenage years and I was sorting out my faith, sorting out where I was following, who I was following. When you're young, you know, you just wanna follow the pack. You wanna fit in with the crowd. And I was trying to fit in with my friends, but I was also trying to find my faith. And I remember I was going to church, but I was also going to nightclubs. And I was sort of torn between the two. And at that time in Newcastle, where I grew up, well, the, 
the church was meeting in the leagues club and on a Sunday night was church in one auditorium, but in the other auditorium was a nightclub. And on a Sunday night, there I was walking up the stairs, I'm going into the nightclub. And then at the same time, out from church comes one of my best mates, Burnsy. And Burnsy, he starts walking down the stairs as I'm walking up the stairs. And he says, Sanger, he said, church is this way. He said, what are you doing? And I'm looking all sheepish and I'm like, ha, 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 ha. And I'm looking all sheepish trying to, and, and, and I started thinking to myself, yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? So I started coming back to church because I knew that's where the call of God was for my life. I knew that that purpose was bigger for my life. And you know what, I started going back, but here's the thing, do you know, I remember that it took months before I felt like I could lift my hands in worship again because I was beating myself up. And that's what we do. We start to beat ourselves up. We punish ourselves. That's not the nature of God. No, the nature of your God is found in Psalm 100 verse five that says, for the Lord is good and His love endures forever. Listen to it. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's the nature of your God for our lives to be continued in Him. So let me give you, a couple of areas that we learn from Peter. When it comes to continuing where you left off, I wanna give you a couple of areas that Peter continued in. Here's the first one. Number one, continue in the Word. Continue in the Word. Acts chapter two, verses 16 to 17 says, no, this is Peter reading and it says, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my Spirit on all people. What's Peter doing here? He's reading from the Word. Now he'd been with the Word, Jesus, but after Jesus had ascended to heaven, now what's he doing? He's continuing in the Word. In Colossians, uh, uh, sorry, in John chapter eight, verse 31, Jesus put it this way. He said, if you continue in my Word, you are really my disciples indeed. Doesn't matter how long it's been since you last read your Bible. Doesn't matter when you last picked up the Bible. Doesn't matter where it was or how long ago it was. Can I say to you today, just continue where you left off. Just continue, pick up that Bible, pick up that Word of God and just continue where you left off. You see, don't let past disappointments rob you from God's promises in His Word for your life. Did you know it's the Word of God that brings freedom to your life? You might be facing natural limitations. You might be facing natural obstacles. You might be facing natural opposition. Well, can I encourage you that when you go to the Word, you find supernatural answers. You find supernatural solutions. You find a supernatural pathway that God leads over your life because it's the Word that brings freedom to your life, you see. Colossians 3 verse 16 says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Let the Word dwell in you richly. The Greek word for richly in this passage is the word plausois, which literally means abundantly, immensely and exceedingly. So let me ask you this. Here it says, let the Word dwell in you richly. Well, what's dwelling in you richly? What's dwelling in you abundantly? What's dwelling in you immensely? Is it hurt? Is it offence? Is it abandonment? Is it fear? What's dwelling in you? Is it anxiety? Is it stress? Is it depression? Is it grief? Is it problems? Because the Bible says, you know what? Don't let that stuff dwell in your life. Don't let it dwell in you richly. Don't let it overwhelm you and consume you. Go to the Word and let His peace overwhelm you. Let His grace overwhelm you. Let His forgiveness overwhelm you. Let His joy overwhelm you. Let the Word dwell in you richly and bring freedom to those areas in your life. You see, God desires His Word to flourish in your life. Acts chapter 12, verse 24 says, but the Word of God continued to spread and flourish. Did you know that's the heart for God, for His Word for your life? That it would continue to spread into every area of your life and cause your life to flourish? That's what happens. The Word of God is described as a seed 
You know what a seed does when it's planted in good soil? It flourishes, it grows. And I wanna tell you, after years and years and years of putting the seed, the Word into my life, I've seen it begin to flourish in the areas of my marriage, areas of my family, areas of my career, areas of my purpose, areas of my future. It just continually does when you keep planting the Word. So Peter, he continued in the Word. Here's, here's the, the next one. Peter, he continued in prayer. Watch this, Acts chapter 3, verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Where's Peter going? He's going to pray. This is the same Peter that fell asleep in prayer with Jesus, but yet he's continuing in prayer. You see, when was the last time you prayed? When was the last time? Was it because a prayer didn't come to pass? Was it because a prayer let you down? Was it because of something you did or you feel like you can't pray to God anymore? Can I say to you today, don't give up praying. Your prayers don't fall on deaf ears. No, your prayers, they're bottled up, they're heard by a God who's always for you, who's always with you. In fact, Jesus said in Luke 18 verse 1, He said, this is why you should pray and not give up. You see, because prayer changes your perspective. Prayer changes your perspective. That's why you need it to continue. You see, too often our natural perspective is polluted by our past and our problems. We let our past or the problems we're facing pollute our perspective and we can't see things clearly. We can't see forward. No, we only see what's around us. We get caught up in what is temporal because of the pollution of our past and our problem. But you see what prayer does is prayer changes your perspective from your small problems to your big God. I use the word small problems because when you compare your problems to the greatness of who your God is, you know, Paul said it like this. He said, for our troubles are light and momentary afflictions. You know, no trouble feels like it's light or momentary. No, it usually feels heavy. It usually feels burdensome. It usually feels hardship when you're in the midst of trouble. But when you compare that problem to the greatness of who your God is, that your God, He's the creator of the universe. He's the maker of the stars, that He's the owner of the heavens and the earth, that He's the restorer of the broken, that He's the healer of the sick, that He's the lover of your soul, that He's the protector of your household, that He's the deliverer of your pain, the hope in your despair, the victory in your fight, the wisdom in your decisions, that He's the Alpha and He's the Omega. He's the beginning, He's the end, He is the answer to your prayer. Stop telling God how big your problem is and start to tell your problems how big your God is. Oh, that's good preaching. That's good preaching online. I'm telling you, that's good preaching. You need that this morning. Get it in your spirit. Continue in the Word. Continue in prayer. And let me finish with this. Continue in church. That's what Peter did. He continued in church. Watch this, Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. In the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with sincere hearts. You know what? When it comes to church, I find myself as a pastor and as a friend always telling people that no matter what's going on in your life, I always say these three words just keep coming. When it comes to church, whatever you're going through right now, just keep coming. Hey, I know you don't feel like coming. I know what might be going on with your, your family and with your marriage and with your friends and with your career, but just keep coming. Hey, I know that you, you, you might've been hurt or offended, but, but can I encourage you, just keep coming. No matter what you're going through, just keep coming. I, I love the movie Finding Nemo because I always liked Dory. I remember watching Dory and Nemo face the biggest obstacles in the ocean that they could face. Yet Dory, she had this phrase that she just kept saying. She'd say, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And I thought, what an attitude to have because I've had to adopt that into my life when I've faced obstacles, when I've faced hurt, when I've faced challenges to distract or discourage me from coming to the house of God. I've got to tell myself, Sanger, just 
just keep coming. Hey, I know I've been through some tragedy. I know I've been through some grief. I've been through some heartache and pain with loved ones. But I keep telling myself, even when I didn't want to come, I'd say, no, just keep coming. Just keep coming. You see, think about a fire. When a fire is burning, the log is ablaze and on fire. When the log's in the fire, it's ablaze. But when you take the log out of the fire, sure, it'll burn for a little while, but then soon enough, it just becomes smoke and embers. And pretty soon the flame that was once there dies out. Can I say, I've seen that with a lot of my friends when it comes to church. When they're in church, I remember being around them. They are on fire for God. They were passionate for the things of God. They wanted to see the will of God prevail in their lives. But then circumstances, decisions took them out where they're not in church anymore. And sure, the the fire burned for a while. But now when I catch up with some of those friends, they've lost their passion. They've lost their zeal for God. Oh, they say, yeah, yeah, I believe in God, but they're they're not living a life that, that desires the things of God anymore. But when you put the log that's been smoky and embering, when you put it back in the fire, you begin to watch it start to kindle again. You begin to watch it start to spark again. And before you know it, it starts to get ablaze again. Well, can I tell you, when it comes to the house of God, doesn't matter how long it's been since you've joined in church, since you've gathered online, since we've been in a building, when you stay connected and you say, I'm just gonna continue. I'm just gonna keep coming. Let me tell you something. The fire keeps burning. The fire keeps ablaze in your life. Years ago, I remember I went into a psych ward. There was a young guy that was struggling with mental illness and he'd been in there for a few months and he'd been a part of our church for a long time. And I went in and I visited him, I heard his story. His family didn't want him anymore. He was living on the streets and he found himself in this psych ward. And as I heard his story, I remember telling him this advice. I said, I said, you've heard the Word of God preached in our church many times. I said, if you just start to apply what you've heard over the years in church, apply it to your life. I said, you will leave this place stronger than you ever have been. Well, he started to write things down and he said, I'm, I'm setting some goals for my life. And then before you know it, now this was years ago, that was October that I visited him. By December, he was out of that mental institution. He was back in his family off the streets. By January, he was on our summer camp in the youth ministry. By February, he was at Vision Sunday and sitting in church. And I wanna tell you, what's stopping you? What's stopping you from continuing in church? What's stopping you from coming back and joining the family, the community of faith? Because let me tell you, why I tell you these things is because I know that church is the best place for growth and health as a Christian that I'm ever gonna get. It is the best place to position myself. So can I say to you today, continue in the Word, continue in prayer, and continue in church. And let's learn from the great Apostle Peter, who, yeah, he made lots of mistakes, but we have a God who loves us regardless of our mistakes. We have a God who's for us regardless of our mistakes. And I'm gonna ask the team just to begin to sing a song because right now I'm gonna pray for people who maybe you've never said a prayer to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. Maybe you've never said a prayer to ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. But this morning, I wanna lead you in that prayer because I believe God is gonna come into your life this morning. And so if that's you, maybe you've been distant from God. Maybe you've never prayed a prayer. Maybe you once did, but it's been a while. And you're saying this morning, I need to come back to Him. Well, I'm gonna lead you in this prayer this morning. Come on, you pray this with me. Dear Jesus, today, I decide decide to follow You, to to ask You into my life, life, to forgive me of sin sin and all of my past mistakes. mistakes. Today, Jesus, I choose You as my Lord and Saviour and as my best friend. friend. Help me to live for You for for the rest of my days. days. In Jesus' Name, name. Amen. 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 Hey, a big congratulations to you. If you prayed that prayer, why don't you write it in the chat? I prayed that prayer. We are so excited for this decision that you have made for your life. And you know what? I mentioned summer camp there. That's just around the corner for all of our youth ministry.
And so you can register for that. But you know what, church? I wanna pray for people. I wanna pray for people. You know what? Maybe this message was for you this morning. Maybe you needed to hear, just continue. Just pick up where you left off. I don't know what it is that you feel disconnected from, whether it be church, whether it be prayer, whether it be God or reading the Bible. But I just wanna pray for you this morning that you get that revelation. You don't have to work your way back. You don't have to do something to get there. No, you can just know that, wow, to be continued over my life just means I'm gonna pick up where I left off. I'm coming back. 2021, look out, because this year is gonna be my best year. I'm, I'm leaving 2020 behind and I'm coming into 21 with a fire ablaze in my heart. So come on, I'm gonna pray for you. Father, I pray for every single person that right now You would set them ablaze with a Holy Ghost fire. That right now You'd stir up their heart. You'd stir up their faith. God, people's hope are coming back. People's joy is coming back. People's peace are coming back over their lives. In Jesus' mighty Name, Amen. Come on, Dave. Come on, let's worship Him. reminder in that love is never going to give up. And Sanger Samways, thank you for an incredible message this, um, this evening. Guys, this morning, saying you've got me all messed up on whether it's day or night this morning. You know, um, your story is still to be continued and God is still writing it. And what an incredible, powerful message. And tonight, church, if you have never been at the evening churches, the evening services at Hillsong Church, tonight's your lucky night because it is gonna be incredible. There's great worship. Pastor Lee Burns is bringing the Word and we are gonna see us into the New Year strong. So why don't you let me pray for you as you go this morning. Father, bless your people. May your face shine upon them. May you lift up the light of your countenance upon them. And may you give them faith to believe that truly God, the best is yet to come and you have not finished writing their story. So bless them as they go into this week, we pray in Jesus' mighty Name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Thank you for being in church this morning. We love you and Happy New Year. God bless.